Hi everyone, welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm Ariane Zersher and today I'm going to be demonstrating all the different ways that you can make a stem. I'm going to cover ruching ribbon, using perfect stems, how to make stems that are cut on the bias, rickrack, and the different stitches that one can apply to those stems to make them even more fabulous. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. I love to hear from you, so please leave any comments or questions you might have in the comments section below, and check out the description with all kinds of links to things that I discuss and demonstrate in this video. Let's get started. Ruching ribbon. So here's my ribbon. I'm going to place my ribbon here as a stem. It's gonna go down, kind of go like that. So I'm going to just very quickly kind of do a very rough estimate. So it's about that long. And I'm gonna triple that length. Then I'm gonna grab my thread zap. And what this does is it will, I press this button, it heats up and you'll see it starts smoking. And then I'm going to sear the end of this so that it does not fray. What you see is that it gets kind of hard. I'm gonna take a 60 weight applique thread, cotton thread. I like using the number 11 short darner because it has an elongated eye and it makes it easier to thread. I'm going to do a zigzag. I'm gonna come up at my end and I'm just gonna do a running stitch like so. And then I'm gonna, it's gonna be a zigzag. So I'm gonna go like this all the way up. So as you can see, it's just ruching up. And when I put it down on my on my piece here, then I'm gonna stitch it once it's all ruched, and that'll be my stem. This is as far as I wanna go with this. I'm going to just very gently pull this down. I'm gonna knot it in the back so I don't lose any of my ruching. I'm going to lay it down here, and I'm gonna clip it there. Zap this end. I'm going to use this thicker end. Do you see that it's thicker here and thinner here? And the reason that that happened is because when I was doing my zigzags I was doing them much closer together they were more like this and as I got up here I started to make the zigzags broader so the denser the zigzag the thinner the ruching is going to be the more elongated the ruching the more the wider it's going to be I'm going to use that as my th my bottom I'm just gonna pin this in place how fabulous is that? My little pin cushion ring. I pin into the fabric. I go over the ribbon, so I'm not pinning into the ribbon, and then the other side. And what it does is it just anchors it down. I haven't cut my thread. You know, I ended it with a knot in the back. I'm at the tip here where I'm going to cut away this part of the whip stitch so that I can tuck my stem under. I'm going to tuck that stem right under. I'm going to keep going all the way down to the end and I'm going to whip stitch this closed. And then I'm going to show you another way to make a stem. These are my perfect stems. They're really wonderful. They're, as you can see, they're all different sizes. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to sew one. The fabric that you cut, depending on the stem size, for a stem that's this size, which is 3 eighths of an inch, you're going to want to cut a piece of fabric. On the bias is nice because that's going to curve. If you don't have the yardage for that and you just have enough for, for doing it on straight of grain, that's fine. It just won't bend as well. But you can ruche it and then it doesn't matter. What you're going to do, this is actually a little wider than you need, but it's fine. You don't want to make it too close to the size because you're going to go ahead and with your zipper foot, you're going to stitch 
right along this edge of this plastic. I'll just show you with this piece right here. Why not? I have my zipper foot on. I'm going to take my stem and I'm going to push it right out the front end. I'm going to put my zipper foot down and I want my needle, instead of being here, I want it on the outside. So I have to shift my needle right to the edge. My thread down. I'm going to push the red stem down so I can see it on the on the other side here sticking out and I'm going to continue to stitch. Now I'm not going to pull this out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this edge and then I'm going to fold this so that my sewing line is right in the center and I'm going to I've trimmed my seam here and I've twisted it so that the stitching line here is sort of center. You just don't want your raw edge to be pushed over too much. You don't want to see it. So you want to center it like this on your stem. The stem is still here all the way down. And now what I'm going to do is with my hot iron, I'm going to push this stem down a little so it's not, and I'm going to go ahead and with a hot iron, I'm going to keep pushing the plastic out of the way as I press. So you can see my plastic is here, and I'm just pulling it as I go. Now, if, if my stem isn't pressing as much as I want it to, I can always spray it with this, which is flatter. But if I were to use this, I would just give it a little spritz and that will and that will do it and that is my perfect stem i'm going to show you a couple of other ones that i did of different sizes so you can just see and there's this one and then i would go ahead i can i can then do a running zigzag like i did with the ribbon i can ruche it uh if it's cut on the bias it's going to be quite easy to to bend i believe this one's cut on the bias yep and then i'm just going to stitch it down the way i did the ribbon. Next up is how to make a stem from a piece of fabric using a bias. These are clover bias makers. You can cut these on the bias. This one is not. This is straight of grain. But if you want to, you can cut it on the bias, which will allow it to uh, curve nicely. These will curve too, but they just require a little more manipulation. So what you do is you go ahead and push that end into your bias marker, and then you get a pin or a needle, and you push that fabric down. And what you'll see is that it comes out folded like this. You then put your iron down and slowly pull this as you slide your iron. So this is being pulled and the iron is following. You can also spray this with flatter. If this is half an inch, you want your fabric strip to be cut an inch. You want to make sure that it goes in pretty centered so it's not sort of askew that's going to make it harder. And that's another way to make a stem. It also helps if you cut the end on an angle. It'll make it easier to thread into the bias maker. Now I'm going to go ahead and feed that using a pin or a needle. I'm going to go ahead and scoot it down until it shows. Another thing you can use is you can anchor the end with a needle or a pin. You can also spray this before it goes in. And there's my, my thinner bias tape. This is a velvet rig rack. That could be pretty as a stem. Here's my ruched ribbon. This is a palestrina knot stem. This is a ribbon that I stitched down on one side and then I pushed it so it puffs up and I stitched it down on this side. This is a perfect stem with little French knots. The ribbon here, I've done little running stitches sporadically with little French knots. These are little fly stitches with a bouillon knot in between the fly. This is a bias tape, a piece of bias tape that I folded in different ways with a French knot. This is two uh, rick racks that are 
twisted. Here's a ruched bias tape. This is a perfect stem. All different stems, all different kinds of ways that you can do a stem. If you have a piece of bias tape, this is, these are these lovely hand dies from Sue Spargo's, you can do a stem that looks like this and each of these pins would be a French knot. So you would put a French knot here, you fold it down, put a French knot here, fold it, put a French knot here, fold it. And in this way, you can make a stem. And depending on how you fold it, you can make it wider or thinner. So I'll show you how. If you fold it, you see how much wider it is here than here? And that's simply because I'm making my fold, instead of doing it this way, I'm going across and it will make it wider. You can do different stitches if you wanted. You could do a running stitch that goes along here in a different, a contrasting thread color if you wanted. You could do little bouillon knots. You could do little pistol stitches coming off of each one or coming out. You can really think of any stitch and, uh, and use it to adhere this. Finally, I'm going to show you how to twist rickrack. You can take two contrasting colors. They need to be the same size or it won't work. You take a pin and pin the ends down on a woolen mat. You pin your ends down and then you're going to twist. You're going to twist them at the valley. You need a couple pins. You use a couple pins to secure it at the top. And then you're just going to keep twisting these. And what will happen is you're going to get a single piece of two woven or twisted rickrack. And you can see how it then looks. And then you sew it. You can sew it down. You can attach it with little French knots. You can just sew it. You could do a running stitch in a contrasting color along, say, the purple or this more blue-green. That's another little effect that you can use using rickrack if you don't want to just do a single rickrack. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to receive notifications of when the next video will be posting, you need to hit the little bell to the right of the subscribe button. I love hearing from you, so please leave any comments or questions you might have in the comments section below. And here's to stitching together.